there's no way you can just wander into building hardware. It's probably one of the hardest startups you can do compared to you know, just writing code, whatever, which is becoming easier and easier. But to make longer form content right now with AI videos very challenging, mainly because of character consistency. The one thing I can tell myself is like get to San Francisco as quickly as possible. It's not a San Francisco thing, but you want to get to a place where you can get lucky as fast as possible. I'm not saying software is dead by any means, but I just think there's going to be more opportunity in hardware. And so, you know, for us, it's like, hey, we want to be one of the first people to do it. And, you know, if we're wrong, we're wrong. If we're right, we're right. We'll find out and you know, check in in five to seven years, maybe longer. But ultimately, I think for us, it's like, hey, the journey is pretty fun. Yeah. And so, so far, so far, so good, I would say. I'm about to go and meet with the guys from Founders Inc. Uh, they're a startup accelerator. Basically, they provide funding, food, shelter, and an accelerator program for their founders. So super different to what a standard VC would do. They're doing it in a very unique way, which is cool. Dissipation is high. It's the first one in SF, and we are back where it all started. anything from consumer electronics to AI hardware to robotics, um, you know, anything that's hard tech, we basically gathered the most ambitious, you know, 50 teams we could find and just put them all in one place. Why for you guys to focus on hardware? Because is it? Yeah, I mean, I would say there's a couple of reasons. One, hardware is just fun, man. Like we're all nerds. Um, this is also a gaming room. <laughs> people like the game. Um, and then we also have a gym because people like the gym. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> This hardware focus, I would say the biggest thing is the pipeline is a little tough. Like for example, I, I don't give specific numbers, but the, there's a huge significant difference in the number of applicants we get for non-hardware things versus hardware things, right? And so for us, it's like, hey, we have to do actually way more effort to bring out kind of that talent of, of you know, potential builders, potential founders, to come work out of here. And so it's a challenge, but you know, I think I'm ready for it. And so one, I think we're also more attracted to those types of personalities. Like these people are choosing to do very hard things because they just, there's no other option. Like they need to see their vision come true. Basically, the company we invest in, one of the unique parts about us is once we actually invest in a team, we don't just kick them out. Traditional venture capital gives them money, like, all right, for all of these teams, it's actually very hard to find the right office space that's small enough, big enough for them to actually work out of this early. And so we actually just offer them kind of like a home here. On average, I think companies will stay here for like a year-ish yeah. before they move out. This is in our DNA, right? Like everything we think about has content in it as one of the core pieces. And it's not, yeah. it's not just the facilities that you see. It's also how we just interact with founders, how we tell their stories, you know, when they come to us with feedback, you know, we are actively thinking about content too, because you know, everyone on the team makes content. It's not just like a, it's not like a secondary thing or, oh, I have to do this to be in the game. Yeah. We just do content. It's like in, in, literally in our DNA. I think that gives us a different edge. Basically, I'm like Owen, French French boy. We're building like the cursor for mechanical engineers. And so basically it's like, we're helping mechanical engineers go faster in their day-to-day -day life. Cursor for mechanical engineers. But it's not really a good way of describing what we do because we're not like generating or, you know, we're like trying to help mechanical engineers to go faster in their day-to-day -day life. So it, it, it goes through a lot of different features. The one we like working on the most right now is automation around their software. So they're very using like a specific software that we call like CAD softwares, SolidWorks, CATIA, uh, Fusion 360, whatever. And there is a lot of like low added value tasks that they're doing. We're trying to make them like go faster with them. Then there is the very like shiny topic, which is like 3D model uh, generation, which is like 3D parametric model generation, the hardest topic. A lot of people are working on it. We're working on it, but it's like very like 
research deep, deep tech and stuff. So that's like not very useful yet for mecha real mechanical engineers. I'm not a mechanical engineer myself, and I feel like we should push towards a world where like everyone can be like a mechanical engineer. That's the very, very, very long-term vision. Um, that's why I'm saying to the investors, you know. But like today, we help mechanical engineers. Same as Will from behind the camera. <laughs> I like uh, making YouTube videos a lot too. But I'm a founder, free time, I like to obviously code, uh, write code, make videos in my free time, document the startup journey as well. And right now I'm building in the AI videos, uh, video space. I believe that the space is gonna be a, get huge. But to make longer form content right now with AI videos is very challenging, mainly because of character consistency. You can't get a uh, consistency of characters and it's a nightmare because Usually you will have an image gem model, so you would generate the starting frame, and then you would download those frames, and then you gotta go into your video gem model, put it in the video gem model, and generate the video. And then you gotta go to 11 labs or sound effects places to generate sound effects. And then you gotta go into your video editor, then you can edit everything. And while I'm working through this workflow, I was very frustrated with this. So I was like, you know what, maybe I can build a tool that kind of combines all these things together, so it's streamlined together. So basically creating the best way to make AI videos, like a, uh, the best AI video maker or a video editor for, in particular, AI videos, yeah. The one thing I can tell myself is like, get to San Francisco as quickly as possible. It's not a San Francisco thing, but you want to get to a place where you can get lucky as fast as possible. I've only yeah. been here for nine months, but just my day-to-day, -day, I'm, number one, learning so much about tech startups because of my environment. And I'm, I'm already having that growth compared to when I moved to Vegas because I was too broke. There was no motion there, in tech at least. I wasn't maximizing my time. The second thing is this, like, you want to be in a place where you can get lucky. Like for example, Will, you just came up today, now I have a new friend who also makes great content, right? I'm able to meet so many cool people by being here, by being in the game. Uh, one of my mentors always told me this, is that before I decided to move to SF or not, he said, you gotta go where the action's at. And I think that's one of the key things, you gotta go where the action's at, don't make it harder on yourself. So the advice I will have given myself is to get to San Francisco as quickly as possible, because it is like the tech hub, yeah. I started at Founders Inc. as an engineer, as an incubating companies, and now I'm, uh, I guess, an investor. We're in San Francisco, in Fort Mason. This is one of two facilities that we have. We actually have a third one, that's kind of a secret. It's in the works. 42,000 square feet, we built this place to be a container for founders to come and just work on the wildest ideas possible. You know, physically, it's just like a physical space that we filled with talent and equipment for people to actually just build things. And Blueprint would be kind of the most recent iteration of that, where we invited 50 ambitious hardware teams to come and just build the future out of our facilities here. And so we gave them, you know, we gave them food, we gave them desk space, we also actually give them equipment. So we give them 3D printers, uh, tooling, CNCs, laser cutters, PS PCB makers, um, you know, anything in between that they would require that's shared, we just finance it and get it for them. And really the goal for them is to come here um, October 1st until November 7th, sprint, make as much progress as possible. And you know, for us, we're here to help them succeed and then also back the best teams out of that batch. It is fun. Like it's so fun to actually work on hardware things. Um, you know, I've always like wanted to tinker with, I grew up tinkering with computers. Um, a lot of the people have similar stories where they just kind of worked on cars, worked on whatever. And so working with your hands is actually pretty fun. And then two, seeing the actual physical manifestation. So I just text Ruslan, he's introducing me to Hubert, who is going to take me to the factory. So we are going to the factory, which has the robots, the drones, the, the crazy stuff. This is going to be fun. The afternoon is shaping up. Yeah, we built those small computer. It is a small computer that AI agents have full control of the computer that you can, you can use with either a website on your laptop or just use with your phone. Whoa. Yeah. So like the rabbit is like, they define some agent 
then they give it to you to use. It's not technically not a programmable computer, right? This is literally a full computer that agent have full control over. So anything with a USB, you plug it in, you can just tap, you know, hack this thing. But also, yeah, you can build software stuff on there too. But yeah. most of people use it to, to, to mess with uh, hardware. Yeah. Some people in cybersecurity, they're really, really into this. Yeah. So they just treat it as a sandbox to, you know, like penetration other people. High schoolers love it. They bring it to their class and they bring it to school, plug into the school sense, CNC machine or stuff. <laughs> and just control them. Hack the math teacher's computer and yeah. like put whatever they want, like Netflix on for the day? Pretty much. Um, wow. The, the idea is we're building the next computer. Because, you know, AI agents, all that is, they, 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 they're getting smarter, right? They run longer yeah. to a point. It just doesn't make sense for you to stare at your laptop and watch it to work, you know? It's like, don't use my laptop. You know, get your own lap laptop. Yeah. And that's basically the AS own laptop. Uh, so now that it's Starlink of the Sea, uh, we're building swarms of autonomous underwater vehicles that can inspect subsea infrastructure in real time. Wow. So imagine things like telecom cables in the deep sea that carry most of our data and communication in the world. Yeah. Today, those things are monitored by ships, divers, tethered submarines. All of those things cost more than $100,000 per day. We're going to solve this problem fully autonomously and fully in real time. Wow. So this is your first day? Yeah, so yeah, we've, been, we've been building out of my wow. parents' garage and we're moving here now to build here. Yep. That's wild. Yeah. Okay, cool. What do you guys think so far? Love it. Yeah, it's a sensory overload for a, for a hardware person. Yeah, for sure. Dude, yeah, there's a lot going there's on. There's a lot right? going on. Wow, have you guys got a desk yet, or what's yeah, the... Just, just moved in here. <laughs> just is, put our stuff this is the This is the first remnant of what will future. people are actually pursuing things that seem impossible to make. And so I think that's what venture should be about as well. Like that's the core part of what Silicon Valley used to be. Back when, you know, there's only maybe one or two VCs, entrepreneurship wasn't like a career path. You know, it was just you and a bunch of other people in the garage just building things. And I think this is kind of a return to that original vision. That's like personally why I'm interested in it. Um, and then too, I just think there's gonna be a lot more opportunity in investing in hardware.